Okay, I made a, a number of attempts and each time 3D Coat would just continue to calculate and calculate and calculate and calculate and calculate. And, calculate. and uh, you know, 20, 30 minutes would pass and it was still calculating. Now previously, Auto Retopo would not take anywhere near that amount of time. It usually is pretty, pretty fast. But uh, obviously there are a lot more considerations going on with the new algorithm improvements. It's still a work in progress, but I wanted to show something and just give a general idea of how to use it and what considerations uh, go into uh, using Auto Retopo versus uh, some of the other tools. So, uh, with that in mind, it really does not like thin objects like this, and obviously anything complex uh, is just going to take quite a bit of time. So. What I did is I just went in using some of the manual retopo tools. I went in and I just created some crude topology over the top. Just created just a, a little a single sided group of polygons to get the rough shape. And what I did is I went over to the right side of the layer groups panel and I was able to drag and drop uh, into this directory I had open uh, for this model. And so once I did that, I was able to go to the voxel room and in the models palette, the same models palette, I was able to access the very same directory here in the same file. So when I click on that object, it's going to try and store it in the scene or bring it into the scene and I have the ability to uh, merge as a skin and set the thickness. Okay, and that's what I did there. No, and I'll hide that layer. So I just created a duplicate of that and merged those two together. And I also right clicked and chose to extrude a few times to give it some level of thickness. Because a lot of times when you are retopologizing uh, an object, some of the vertices from the Retapo mesh can actually uh, try and snap to the other side if it's too thin. Okay, so you need probably a little bit of an exaggerated thickness on thin objects like this and then later on you can go in and kind of uh, massage it to the original layer like this one. But in this case I noticed that the, the Banshee actually does not have holes like this, it's just portions of the wings that are somewhat transparent so in this case it's good to actually uh, re to apologize it to a solid object like this but um, in the end when we go to baking everything that solid object placed over the top of this it should bake and these areas where you have holes it'll just be transparent so it should look like that when we get to the uh, paint room so what I'm going to do now is I'm not even going to try to do auto retopo. I've, I've tried it and I've tried it and I've tried it and it just doesn't seem to like this thin object. And uh, so what I'm going to do is instead of beating my head against the wall, try and make it work. I'm going to simply use the strokes tool. I'll just clear the strokes that are already there. Go ahead and make sure I get enough to hold the contours here. Okay. 
and normally I wouldn't put so many strokes but or so many loops but in this case I want to again just make sure that I have enough to capture the contours that I have so I don't have to go in and spend so much time doing uh, filling these in with split rings and so on So I'm going to hold the control key and just start clicking points. Oops. Hold the control key. Okay, so now that I have this single cross section, I should be good to go. Uh, I'm going to crank this up to about 22. I'll even make it 24. I hit enter. And as you can see, I just you know put those loops down and it create you know creates an entire section of geometry for me. So it, it really is an auto retopo tool, as I've mentioned, uh, in its own right. So I'll use the points and faces to go in and clean a few of these missing or in it, a few of these holes. I'll close them up. Okay. All right. So I can use split rings right here on the ends to make sure I have enough geometry to maintain those shapes. I'll do the same thing right here. I'm going to add plenty right here because after I use the cap tool, I can then choose slide edges and slide that toward the end. same here all of these I can slide them toward the end oops so 
So let's actually select that vertice right there. Oops. Escape. Okay. And choose faces. Delete. Now I can commence to sliding. Then I can go back and cap that. Take this one and extrude it back inward instead of outward. So Okay, so we're right back where we were, and I am actually going to go ahead and merge this copy with this body layer. Can use the fill tool. And fill those little gaps in. Okay, so I can also click on Sim Copy and make it a copy over here on the opposite side. Save a copy here. And so, yeah, what I would do is I had to go in and try and maybe add some rings here, or I could delete some of these on this layer, on this body layer. Kind of reduce it down a little bit. Just try and delete every other one. So I'll go ahead and select the faces on this one. Choose vertices. I can start welding some of these together. So 
So I can see I probably will have split. Splittering right there. Here. Okay. Go back to my vertices. Okay, we'll go ahead and stop the recording right here and pick it up in the next video where we start working on the head. Thank you for watching.